welcome back to Spec. Today I'm going to be unboxing the Cypher Lords from the War Cry game, which is going to be my first new war band after the two that came in the starter set. Now the previous video for the unbox is up there for the starters, but we're going to take our time and look at this. And yes, I have been waiting all this time. Um, I was going to have a bit of assistance to open this, but um, clearly they're not here to assist. So I want to do it myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's have a look at the box. Now the artwork looks beautiful. There's no two ways about this. And it just absolutely fascinated me. The first thing that drew me to it was this kind of like almost Dr. Fate style Egyptian-esque mask, reminiscent of Thousand Sons. I mean, I don't actually have Thousand Sons army for 40k, but this just intrigues me. That looks great. Okay, let's get it open. There we go. Let's get the cellophane off. Now, I've had this in my bag for ever since I bought the starter set. So, you know, it's it's been traveling with me. So just to get it open is great. And again, that's just nice. One thing I've already noticed, um, back in the day on the back of the box, you used to have the colors that you need to purchase at the same time. I mean, you could always mix colors, but they used to have like a little kind of, um, almost like a guide just to tell you which colors you need uh, to use to get this effect. But I suppose either way, it doesn't matter. Box time, let's open up the box. Details there. Made in the UK. Why am I surprised? So let's open it up. Let's put the box there. So here we have in a box, we've got our tray. We've got our bases, and Warcry does actually use quite a few 25mm bases. They have got 28s and 32s, which is, again, pretty cool. Not rims, not chaos spinners. <laughs> and we're just getting a look at the sprue here. Now, the design work for the uh, items which were in the starter box was, is brilliant, and I've had so much fun painting it out. Uh, I just used an effect for the uh, the Untamed Beast, which was more like a, almost like Blanjitsu, where I kind of painted it in stark colors, and then used washes to paint. And in contrast, I used, not contrast paints, but in contrast for the Iron Golems, I used the um, copper colors. Uh, and what I figured was is that they had mined all of the mithril uh, that they found, all the Stormcast materials from their armor to make their own with these I think what I'll do is they, they kind of like almost have like a Slanesh vibe about them maybe because it's the amount of flesh that they're showing and that's what I get from these but then again there's that magic, like Egyptian style Dr. Fate head mask there now I'm really interested in seeing these in combat and after playing a few games it is a hell of a lot of fun it is really quick and sometimes it's only as long as three battle rounds, but it's just brilliant. Okay, let me continue with this. But look, even weaponry is so clean. And these poses, is such an unusual pose that you could tell right away that weapons drop behind the back, almost like a concealed dance move. And I think even the, the silhouette design uh, in the book itself, you know, gives so much to the idea and the concept of these characters. There's a fan there. It just... <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm well impressed. If they actually made a whole army that looked like this for Age of Sigmar, I would actually buy it. Just based on this alone, I would buy it. It doesn't matter about the effects, doesn't matter about the weapons, I would buy it. So here's our instruction book. Again, nice piece of design work there, nice bit of contrast there. Uh, you know, the warm to cold, but still keeping the warm colors to tie it together. Well done, Games Workshop design team. Instructions there. It's got our bases, as usual. So we only got one large model, which is probably the main model, the leader model. And there he, she is. We have no idea uh, who that is. 
You can make it whoever you want by the looks of it. Same with the rest of these. They've got their actual names there, which is really good. You can still generate your own names if you're playing. Options. Um, well, what I tend to do when building my warband is work out how many points it is closer to 1,000, which one I need, and then I select the, the one which is more points closer to 1,000 or, or less. And I hope that this is a 1,000 points worth of models. In the starter box set, you run about 980 for both groups. So you're just shy by a couple of points. Just so nice. So nice. I'm well impressed. Now that does look slightly off. Flat footed, I'd like to see the foot just turn that slightly a bit more. You know, like in a cat stance. Maybe even here up on his front toe, it might have been hard to model. Just so like there's really shifting weight so you can shift forward or shift back. That's an old martial arts thing anyway. Uh, dies hard. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's going to have any weapon effect or if that's just purely for stylistic design. I think it's just purely for stylistic design. But we've got one option in there. Okay, let's have a look. And we've got our cards. And um, again, what I like about this is it's one box. As long as you've got your models, which you do in this box, you're all good to go. And it's kind of like the card packs. Again, one pack, one previous model from Age of Sigma, or one set of models from Sigma, and you're ready to go. Now, I have not been able to find the Grimgast cards, as they have sold out pretty much everywhere near me. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed. The Stormcast cards, which I will be doing shortly, um, was kind of disappointing because they didn't have the models that I expected they would and that would have been the most popular models in a sense that everybody would have had but I think they've almost deliberately chose the models that people didn't have so be aware that when you're getting the card sets uh, the models might be based on what they want to sell uh, versus what you have in your army or what you bought in box sets right away so Cypher Lord with abilities there which looks kind of nice there Leader abilities, warrior abilities, nice. And again, with our models, I'm just liking the amount of models you have there. It's just beautiful. And then we have the cards in multiple languages there. I like this. Maybe you could, you know, teach yourself multiple languages. It's an interesting move. It moves away from repackaging, but it also gives you weight to your box. It makes you feel that you really got something. Uh, I have heard of people cutting these out and using these to play with, and uh, that's up to you. That could be really handy if you want to learn how an army works, uh, play against it, but normally if you've got these cards, you normally got this set, but maybe your buddy's got some of these, and they can give them to you, and you can work around that, and you can practice. So we've got our characters there, and we're looking at like 205 points is expensive. Let's have a look. Back there, design. Again, some beautiful artwork. And I think it's about time they had cards, and I spoke about this with the Conquest magazines, which I'm still doing, by the way. Just waiting for delivery. About having a stat block with an actual image and picture. And I think it's about time that that's been done pretty much of everything. And Age of Sigma does that, but 40k doesn't. Oh, I would love to see that. Especially if you're new, this is this is some of the best of stuff. I mean, look at that. Even down to sandal work is so damn cool. There you go, there's that guy with a double blade thing going on. Looks like he's gonna chop somebody real bad. He's gonna cut somebody for their lunch money, pocket money, and for their Christmas money, I swear. This is all looking Wu Shu style here, look. Nice. Okay, a scorecard for your thralls and for the beasts. So keep these, don't throw them away. Uh, you can use them for your thralls. So if you've got one model, um, which is or one card for the model, you could just put it underneath that. And then, you know, you kind of labeled your models one, two, and three, and then you could just refer to numbers and stats and health down here. Same with the beasts on the back. Get your beast card, put it up here, and then however many beasts you control, you just number them off on the board, same way you just mark their wounds here. 
But anyway, um, I was, I'm was i still really happy with that. I really like that. I really like the fact that I've got these models and I can almost start right away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build them up and see how they look and just bring them back. And then um, see if the model design really matches up with the intention of what they're looking to do. And we we'll go from there. Okay, so this is all the models built and I can't believe how dynamic these models actually are and it was a pleasure to make them. I mean, I was said before that they wasn't actually on their feet, uh, if you know, for these poses. And if you actually look, they are on their toes. And in some cases, they're actually like on the, the edges of their feet. I think it's this guy here. I mean, it's unreal. Absolutely unreal. Um, my, my apologies, Games Workshop. I mean, look, look at the angle of his foot. So you can see the weight distribution and he's moving forward. These are probably the, the most fluid models I've seen um, from Games Workshop, as in the sense of motion and design. And yeah, pleasure, absolute pleasure making these. There are only eight in a box, but legitimately, probably the best models I've made. In 40K, you don't get this kind of design for the models to make. <laughs> speechless, absolutely speechless. Now, within the set, you do have some options for building. Uh, it's just worth pointing out that if you do build it with the options with blades versus the glaive, uh, which the guy has the option there, you can only get about 955 points and this is 965 points in this configuration most warband games are a thousand points you know i mean it's not quite the cost of a model that you're out but it is close and that kind of runs in line with the starter box set anyway so just to have a closer look at some of these models here you can see just the motion i mean you know, not emotion, but the motion of the design there. Just trying to get that to focus. There we go. I mean, look at that. Let me just put, quickly put these together. They do need a little bit of filing down, cleaning, but my goodness. The potion, the liquid, the smoke, the hair plumes, the cape, the fan, the extra secret arm there. You see it? Amazing. And then this model, I mean, oh my frigging goodness. Look at that. I mean, this is just some amazing stuff. Like, I, I've been doing these models for years. And even that pose, that angle, leaning forward into the thrust, into the attack, Maybe that just speaks to my old school martial arts background, but that is just amazing. So we have a look at some of the other models there. And I mean, it's the same for all of them, all of them. It's not like they've just done this with one or two models and that's it. They've done this with all of them. They've kept that motion. This is like a sweeping attack, it's just sweeps and it's, it's moving by. This one's coming forward. You can see it in the feet and the positioning. Again, even the thralls uh, or the, the the smaller models, which are like classes minions, you can see it in their design. You know, they're ready. The motion is poised. Attack, defend. You can, it's beautiful. I mean, if they do this with all of the models for Warcry, I didn't get this sense from the Iron Golems. The Iron Golems were very much rigid, like rigid in their posing. And again, look at that. Even the angle of the foot there. See it? It's telling you they're getting ready to either step away from the low attack or step into that thrust. Now, these models, they get more attacks on their cards um, than most. Like, the Iron Golems are tough. Um, the Untamed Beasts move quick. These guys get extra attacks. Um, a little, little Xena throwing disc there. <laughs> these guys get extra attacks. Um, and I just... I think that this is probably going to be one of the better war bands to play and I want to hurry up and paint these. But I am going to take my time and you know I'm not going to put these on the table without them being painted. 
Um, but you can see just from the, the cards there how they do look and from the box in the background. But because the spear tip is missing there, you can't really see it. Now the advantages of having uh, glaives um, versus double blades, even that costs five points more, is you get the ability of double low sweep and blow, which means you, you get like an extra attack on, uh, let's just say an access to an extra ability. So that's what you're paying those extra five points for. So it depends upon if you're a person that likes to use your abilities or not. I suggest you do use them where you can. Otherwise you end up with a stack of dice at the end of the turn. Okay, so that has been the Cypher Lords. Uh, this has been Spect. I hope you enjoyed your time. I will paint these up in the future and it may be in a community posting, which will be a video coming up soon. I have a diorama inspired by the Warband idea, uh, which is between uh, a few YouTubers collaboration and that was fun to do and we'll be putting up more information about that next week. So I know this week has been kind of light on content but that is because I've been preparing, building, practicing and playing uh, Warcry uh, and getting the idea of it so that when I speak about it I can talk about it with uh, an actual understanding. So this has been Specs. I've enjoyed my time, hope you've enjoyed yours. PC out.